Good morning, everyone. Thank you for connecting on the call this morning. Uh, it's really nice to restart the mentoring hour, the weekly mentoring hour that we have every Thursday from 8 a.m. to 8.50 a.m. Indian Standard Time. So as we start out the mentoring hour sessions for this semester of spring 2024, uh, let's start off with a word of prayer. And uh, I want to request uh, one of our students on the call to uh, please lead us. That would be wonderful. Uh, would any of you like to lead, please? Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just wish to thank you once again for this uh, hour of mentoring. We we pray, Father, that th this year too, Lord, that uh, as you lead us through these mentoring hours, Father, that we'll be able to to learn uh, from your word and apply it in our lives, Father. We pray, Father, that not only will this hour of mentoring be a blessing for us, Father, but this entire course through this year we'll be able to learn and retain whatever we learn and apply it in our lives, Father. We pray for a blessing upon our entire faculty and all our students, Father. Uh, in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, uh, Brother Sanjay. So this morning we will look at uh, a particular subject as well, the way we generally do for the mentoring our sessions. And uh, we can then take questions so we'll probably have a time of sharing for about 10, uh, 10, maybe 15 minutes. And then we will open it out for questions related to the subject that we are focusing on. Or it could be regarding uh, what you're learning in your courses or maybe something that has been on your mind as you're serving the Lord, as you're journeying together with the Lord. So uh, today I just wanted us to uh, think through the aspect of planning in our lives and to plan ahead for the future. So uh, I, I really hope that you find this helpful. Uh, just share my screen with all of us. Please give me a moment. Okay, hope uh, you're able to see. Please let me know. Yes, we are able to see. Okay, that's great. That's great. All right. So um, with regard to uh, planning and planning for the future, uh, we begin by understanding who God is. So as we look at uh, the word of God, we see that God is a God uh, of plan and design. Psalm 33 verse 11 says, the counsel of the Lord stands forever, the plans of his heart to all generations. So here the word counsel uh, has the meaning of having plans. So God has a counsel or he has counsel regarding um, things pertaining to everything uh, you know, that, that he is engaged with. And uh, we can uh, recognize that God has plans. Uh, he not only has plans for individuals, but we see that he has plans for generations. So this is the God we serve uh, in his mind. He carries a plan and a design, and that's how he goes about executing things. So when we talk about the aspect of planning, um, we are we are really following what God does, uh, and uh, you know we we can get God's help uh, in order for us to plan effectively uh, so that it is useful. 
So let's keep reading on. Uh, I just said that God has a plan. He has a specific plan for individuals as well as for generations. Now, God has formed us with a plan. We know uh, that Psalm 139 says that God is the one who formed our substance. He formed us so beautifully. Um, and, uh, you know, he, he has thoughts towards us and he, he has a purpose for our lives. And the question, that is before us, before we uh, delve deeper into planning is whether we understand the purpose that God has for us. You know, God has a purpose. We see that uh, in the lives of various men and women in scripture, Moses as a deliverer. We see Esther rise up at a very critical time in history to save her people. We know that the Lord Jesus came with a mandate of redemption. Uh, and uh, in this manner, we can talk about the lives of many men and women, all of whom carried a purpose of God and uh, they also along with you know in line with the purpose of God they had corresponding gifts and uh, uh, the grace of God given to them in order to fulfill that purpose that God had for them so this is also something for us to understand God God is a God of a plan and design he has designed us um, individually and uh, in that design uh, is our purpose and when we talk about purpose one of the other connected um, uh, things for us to remember is that there is a grace related to that calling that god has given us and that's why you know all the all of us may may find that we are so different from each other our strengths are so different from one another so we need to recognize it now having spoken about these matters um we are going to talk now about uh, planning so i just want to uh, encourage us that planning is a good thing the bible tells us in proverbs chapter 4 and verse 26 that we must ponder the path of our feet and let, let all our ways be established so uh, in order for us to live life uh, in a manner where we say you know whatever happens happens uh, we'll see i'll take it as it goes um, uh, that that is uh, that is a risk that we are taking because the bible encourages us to think about where we are going so ponder the path of your feet so we ought to think about it and uh, right at the start of this year this new year uh, we just thought that if we talk about the subject of planning it would really help us to plan the year ahead and uh, continue to pursue the purpose of god for us now uh, is it possible for us to plan in such a way that we are aligned to what god wants for us uh, very much that is possible so for it is possible for us to know god's heart god's will for our lives we have passages of scripture such as first uh, corinthians chapter 2 verses 9 through 10 where we are told that God has amazing plans for us, but he has revealed those things to us by his Holy Spirit. And uh, so God uh, is willing to reveal the plans to us. And therefore, we can know what he wants us to do. Uh, similarly, in Ephesians 5.17, we also understand that it's possible to understand the will of God. Uh, I know that we touch upon uh, these scriptures in some of our courses, fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. And, you know, how do we really recognize that purpose? So uh, uh, I, I would encourage us to spend time reading uh, some of those publications uh, that, you know, we, we already study. So the point is that we can know God's will for our lives and therefore plan aligned to God's will or God's purpose. Now, what is the usefulness of planning? Planning will help us prepare for our future. There's a passage in Proverbs chapter 6, which talks about the ants and their wisdom. Uh, we see how they plan up for the season ahead. They work very hard to gather for a season of lack in the season of abundance. And uh, this passage points us to the ants and uh, tells us to learn from their ways. So when we plan, we are able to prepare 
for a better and a brighter future. Uh, the other advantage of uh, planning is that it helps us have foresight. Um, uh, we 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 sort of uh, think about things. We reflect on on all that is possible. Uh, we take into account, uh, you know, uh, some of the uh, resources that we have and the best way to utilize them. So basically, we are we are reflecting and we are thinking matters through, uh, and it enables us to foresee certain so certain things that uh, we will miss out otherwise. And that is the importance of planning. It gives us foresight. And that way, maybe we'll escape, uh, you know, some unnecessary delays and unnecessary problems. Um, so it gives us foresight. And uh, thirdly, we uh, see that when we talk about planning, it, it helps us to really uh, hear from God and know his heart. So we begin to plan aligned to what God wants us to do. So when I'm seeking God for a plan for this year, 2024, um, uh, what I'm really saying is, God, whatever is your plan for me or whatever is your purpose for me, I want to know that from you. And, uh, you know, I, I want to work towards it or I want to pursue it. So we see that uh, even Apostle Paul, when he talks about his planning in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, he states that he doesn't do it, uh, you know, uh, just as, as a matter of uh, an exercise, just a practical exercise to do, but he waits upon the Lord to see how the Lord may be leading him, and then he makes his plans. Uh, the next important um, as aspect or usefulness of planning would be that it helps us utilize our resources, which I mentioned earlier. We can make better use of our time, better use of our energy, uh, maybe money or uh, any any other resource that we have. If we are working in an organization or we are working with people, then uh, human resource that is around us, we can make the best use of all the resources if we work with a plan. Uh, and planning leads us into an increase. It also helps us be excellent in what we are doing. Uh, it's quite uh, self-explanatory. So I just move on to the next uh, slide here that talks about certain practical steps. Um, and I'm going to give us an overview of these practical steps. Uh, however, I would refer us to a sermon series on the uh, apcwo.org website which is called as uh, plans and uh, pursuit you can look that up it uh, was done last year and it carries uh, quite elaborate um, explanations about things like life plan and how one can uh, do it effectively so what are some practical steps that we can employ uh, as far as planning is concerned um, as i've been saying seeking god's heart uh, and uh, that is the beginning of planning because uh, we hear from God uh, and then, you know, we are able to apply. Now, this is not to state that we cannot use our wisdom, which we have gained over the years through experience and study. Um, so we hear from God, we apply whatever we, we have uh, uh, built up over the years, and that helps us to plan well. Now, um, uh, we can enlist priorities. I'll just, uh, you know, uh, highlight uh, some of the points. Um, I, I think in the slides there is a repetition. My apologies for that. Uh, so we can endless priorities. That That is helpful. So uh, it is said that uh, unless we plan, anything and everything can take away our time. Uh, but when we plan, what we are really doing is we are prioritizing our time in a given day or in a given week, um, you know, in, in a given month. And uh, we know where we want to put our time. And that really helps us to invest where we really want to invest and where we really want to see growth. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we can avoid time wasters that way. We can make long-term plans and short-term plans. So uh, both of these will involve goals. We would need to identify long-term goals um it, it could even have to do with our life plan you know what is it that we want to see achieved in our life and then we can sort of break that down into different uh, uh 
things like uh, what do I want to see achieved uh, in my spiritual walk with the Lord? What do I want to see achieved in my career? What do I want to see achieved in my um, family? And so we break it down to different um, things that concern us and enlist the goals there. So this can be done for the long term. Um, we can plan for a decade. We can plan for five years at a time, three years at a time. Uh, or, uh, and short term plans would be uh, somewhat, uh, you know, timeline is shorter as it states uh, planning for maybe, you know, a year or less than a year. So uh, all of these will help us understand our goals and then work towards it. When we set goals, it's really important to have them uh, as SMART goals. SMART goals um, stands for uh, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. And when we plan in this manner, we are more likely to, to fulfill what we have um, planned out for ourselves. Uh, and of course, you know, there are very many tools and methods that we can use, things like um, uh, scheduling, time boxing, uh, and when we utilize um, uh, all these tools, it'll help us be more effective and uh, achieve our goals. So I'm just um, showing for us here on the slide, as I mentioned in our sermon series, we talked about the life plan. And there's an example here in our slide where someone who wants to become a tech entrepreneur or launch a, a tech startup, you know, what kind of a plan this individual could make uh, with timelines and uh, what they want to achieve, the objective, and of course, their pursuits or their goals. Okay. Similarly, uh, they could plan for various aspects of their lives, spiritual life, personal life, family, finances. Uh, whatever else is of priority to them. So finally, uh, I wanted to state this for us to consider. Uh, planning is wonderful, but a plan which is not implemented uh, is, is um, uh, you know, it, it, it is not useful because uh, great plans exist on paper, great plans exist in our minds, but if it is not implemented, then, uh, you know, it, it, it's not real. Uh, and so uh, implementation has to go with planning, which is what makes it um, successful. And even though we plan uh, in life, you know, many, many things could go a different way uh, due to certain decisions that were made, uh, maybe some mistakes that happen along the way, some challenges that we uh, faced, some unexpected situations that uh, we came across, or, uh, you know, something that, that happened because of people around us. Now, when all of these things happen, one must not be discouraged. You know, God is still in our lives. We can always seek the Lord and uh, see how we can move forward from that point onwards. Because, you know, God uh, is a God who has taught us in his word that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and those who are called according to his purpose. So I uh, just want to encourage us to plan and uh, to trust God. And may we have a very fruitful and a wonderful uh, 2024. So I just want to uh, stop here and have us uh, ask questions if there are any related to planning. And uh, of course, we will also take up other questions. Our faculty also are on the call, so we'll be happy to share what we know. Good morning, Sister Nancy. Yes, yes, good morning, Sister Esther. Uh, I like the practical uh, tips for planning as is such a great uh, blessing to all of us. However, uh, we we do face challenges uh, when we intend to apply, uh, whether it is smart goals or uh, uh, time frames which we consider while planning. So most uh, most important, I mean, I feel the challenge we face is we plan uh, as a team, we plan as an individual, but sometimes uh, all of them may not be on the same uh, level of maybe intellect or also <clears throat> cannot understand the gravity of the situation. So such a case, like we have planned, we have everything in place, but 
uh, the, uh, the different mindsets and the different uh, priorities uh, have uh, different uh, goals of people. So how do we overcome that delays or lag or uh, get them onto the same page uh, when you're executing, especially uh, if it's a teamwork? Uh, thank you, Sister Esther. That is a, a very pertinent uh, query. Um, so when we are working in a team, uh, I believe that in order for us to lead a team, uh, it's good to have a vision. So when we set the stage, when we um, uh, paint the picture of what we are looking ahead for, uh, it becomes easier for the team to understand and for the team to follow. So having a vision is helpful um, uh, to begin with. Now, the second important thing that I would uh, consider is communication. So uh, as a leader, it's important for us to uh, communicate with clarity with the people uh, on our team. So uh, let's say, you know, I, I know the vision and I'm working hard towards the vision and uh, my team has no clue. Uh, though I am pulling in a certain direction uh, and they also are, you know, people with good intentions, they will not be able to uh, work alongside. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's important to communicate the vision to our team. And uh, thirdly, uh, to depend on the spirit of God to bring in that understanding. Now, uh, I am reminded of Acts chapter 15, where uh, there was uh, a certain situation where, um, uh, you know, circumcision was being imposed on the the Gentiles who were turning to the Lord. And this became, uh, and uh, it was, it was, um, uh, you know, said that that would be a requirement for salvation, which the apostles did not agree with because uh, circumcision was not a requirement for salvation. So in this matter, when uh, they had to make a decision, the apostles had to make a decision for the people. Uh, it's really wonderful to see how they did it. You know, they called for a team meeting, they discussed together. And the passage says that, uh, you know, as the Holy Spirit led them. So as the Holy Spirit guided them, they came up with the conclusion uh, and they were all in you know, agreement to that conclusion. And uh, they were actually able to go forward with what needed to be done. OK, so uh, I, I hope that helps, uh, Sister Esther. And if my colleagues have anything more to add, uh, that would be nice, too. Uh, thank you, Sister Nancy. That was really uh, very enlightening. Thank you. Okay, sure. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you. We appreciate that. Um, all right. I see here in our chat, uh, how do you start on, plan on starting a ministry with little or no finances? Can you recommend a resource material on ministry preparation? Uh, so, Nadel, thank you. Um, that's a good these are good questions as well. Uh, we have a lot of content on this uh, question in our subjects. Um, uh, I, I think when we talk about the house of God, we have some sections towards the end where we uh, talk about church planting. And uh, that could enlighten you on this matter, uh, even related to you know finances. Uh, but having said that, I will share my thoughts. And uh, I think Pastor Roshan is here, Pastor Deepika, Pastor Selena. Please feel free to share your thoughts. Um, as I stated earlier, uh, Nidel, I believe that um, it, it, you know the statement is, uh, uh, I've heard it somewhere, where there is God's vision, there will be God's provision. So uh, to start a ministry, at a point where we may not have resources, we at least need a vision, a God-given vision that we are clear about and you know we are passionate about. And uh, start to work hard from there, seek God for his wisdom. Uh, and you know, all these other things will come, like you know, resources, uh, finances, because we are building up. Right, step by step, but it's got to start with a vision. So uh, that's my thought, and uh, maybe 
my colleagues could uh, shed more light on this. Uh, nothing from me, Pastor Nancy. I think you've answered everything. Oh, OK. Thank you so much, Pastor Ocean. Uh, Pastor Deepika, any, any thoughts? Oh, I suppose we would kind of, uh, you know, when we are planning out the ministry, we would be um, we would be kind of figuring out uh, what are the different things that we want to take up. So, I mean, if it's going to be a ministry, let us say, in a nearby town, so we would be kind of thinking of uh, uh, what would be the expenses involved for the different activities that we would be taking up. So once we put that down on paper, uh, you know, at the planning stage, when we are just waiting upon the Lord in prayer, maybe the Lord would say, you know, first I would like some prayer teams going out over there for a few months and going to different localities and praying over there. And then maybe the Lord would say, I would want some teams to go and start uh, contacting some people there and getting to know them. So, I mean, there are, there are some basic things that the Lord would have laid on our hearts regarding that particular ministry, right? So once we put on those different points on paper, the expenses which would be involved for each of those components of the ministry, uh, we would probably have to start praying for it. So we already have on paper an outline of what the Lord wants from us. And now we need finances for those particular things. So we can now more specifically pray and say, Lord, uh, um, from where would I be getting the finances for each of these components? Is there anyone specific that you want me to reach out to and you know share with them about this particular particular ministry so would you want them to partner with us in doing this so maybe the lord would bring to our hearts certain people who would uh, you know be willing to contribute uh, for those particular aspects of that ministry on the other hand uh, uh, the lord just may give us ideas on how we can raise funds for those particular components so specific uh, praying specifically helps a lot so once we have things down on paper these are the things that the Lord wants me to do in this particular ministry. I can start praying specifically for each of those particular components. And the Lord would give creative ideas on how to raise funds, or he would bring to mind people who can help me with uh, uh, different aspects of that uh, ministry work. It's maybe one point. Yeah. If anyone else could add to that. Sure. Thank you, Pastor uh, Deepika. Those are very practical things for one to uh, do. Um, and I think we, Bas Selina was wanting to say something. Uh, thank Would you, you like Pastor Nancy. Uh, just like you mentioned, uh, it's good to, you know, um, uh, define uh, the vision, the mission, uh, the purpose and the goal of your ministry, because uh, once you know your vision, it will help attract uh, people uh, or like-minded individuals who share the same passion that you have. Also, uh, you know, look for uh, uh, people with the same, you know, who are able to volunteer, give their time and skills. And, uh, you know, that will be an amazing uh, uh, resource of people who will be able to contribute um, uh, with their time and their skills. Also, um, you know, um, we online, we can uh, through social media uh, also reach out to uh, a wider audience where we can connect with uh, people who have, you know, who can support us, potential supporters, and also partner with um, other mission organizations or other Christian organizations or churches uh, that are doing the same ministry that you are doing and um, you know which can lead to sharing resources um, and also help in moving you forward in your ministry um, would also like to say that we can uh, raise uh, you know have something like a fundraising event where you can raise funds for your uh, 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 you know ministry that god has laid in your heart yeah i hope this helps thank you Thank you, Pastor Selena. Those were uh, very important points as well, um, especially what you shared initially about setting down the vision, mission, purpose, and goal for the ministry. So, uh, Del, I hope that this answers your question. Uh, if there are any follow-up questions to that, please let us know, and you know we'll try to address that. Um,
Yes. Uh, so Jacqueline has posted, uh, Pastor, how do we keep our focus on God even while making plans and while implementing, we may face some oppositions. And as you mentioned, there may be God appointed surprises when it gets delayed. How to handle such situations without getting discouraged, pursue and take it further? OK, anyone would like to address this for Jackin? All right. So I'll just share some thoughts uh, that I have. Uh, so you're right, Jacqueline. Uh, when we make plans, uh, we may find that there are sudden surprises along the way. Some may be positive, uh, whereas some are challenging and may give us this sense of we may not be able to achieve what we had put down when we started on this mission. Uh, but here's the thing, you know, though, uh, like when we do this exercise of uh, envisioning our, our uh, future, uh, planning for uh, the purpose that God has for us, uh, let me just talk in terms of maybe a life plan, right? So we uh, prayed, we sought the Lord, and we have this idea about what God wants us to do, what God wants us to be. And we've kind of put it down. Um, and, and we're saying that, OK, I, I'm seeing that uh, in the first 10 years, this is what God would go, use me for, and the next 10 years for something else, and then something else, and something, something else. Um, broadly, uh, like if you've sought the Lord, it, it should go aligned to that but for whatever reason you know if there is some 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 change uh we must recognize that it's not set in stone in the sense that we are still journeying with god and god is still with us and so uh in the midst of that uh change uh, or uh, interruption that's happening we can ask god um as to how he would want us na to navigate okay through uh, that particular season of our lives so that we can bounce back into the purpose that God has for us. So it's it's about journeying with God. It's not just about, you know, putting it down on paper and, uh, you know, being very uh, sort of rigid about it. If certain changes do happen in some seasons of our lives, with God's help uh, and his guidance, we should be able to navigate um, those things. So that would be my my view. OK, thank you, Jackie. So I'm assuming that that addressed your question. So thank you for that. Uh, now coming to Deeksha's question here. She says, ma'am, as we think to do plan, but how can we know that such such things will happen on those particular time or season we can know about accuracy so diksha as we shared earlier uh, god is able to reveal okay uh, so it's about us seeking him now in the process of seeking the lord it is possible that uh, maybe we are not like a hundred percent accurate we have we had an idea uh, but it's it's not uh, you know like some portions may still be um, uh, unclear so that's okay that's okay so we just do our best diksha we just do our best to hear from god and uh, 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 you know then begin to flow with it and of course uh, as as we journey forward god will help us strengthen us and there are uh, yeah so uh, for us to exactly like let's say we plan something and that's not exactly happening uh don't don't let that discourage you try to uh, do your best once again to seek god in that moment 
to figure out, hey, what is it that I missed? Uh, maybe I should have done it this way. Have a learning from that experience. Okay, so uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh, and yeah, sure. Thank you so much for this really good questions. Um, any other questions or something that you know you, you wanted to share regarding the aspect of planning? All right, so uh, I mean, if we have any questions regarding other teams, please feel free. You could ask about them as well. All right. So, um, yeah, I really hope that we are able to use some of the thoughts from today's call to plan ahead for 2024 and uh, pursue the purpose of God. And if there are no questions, uh, then we can wrap up this morning's call. Is that okay? OK, great. So let's do that then. We will um, close off with a word of prayer. And uh, I would like to request uh, Pastor Selena. Pastor Selena, could you pl please pray for all of us as faculty and students for God to lead us this new year? Sure, Pastor Nancy. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for your grace, for your mercy the way that you have enabled us all these years for your presence, for your guidance, for your wisdom, for your leading. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for um, journeying along with us, for teaching us, for counseling us, for enabling us, helping us. Uh, this, last, this last year, we thank you, God, for the things that you've uh, helped us to accomplish. We thank you for the grace and the strength that... Uh, you have given to us in times of our need, in times of our challenges. We thank you for um, every season that you have seen us through. And we know that even as we journey along this new year, that your presence goes with us, God. Your wisdom is with us. We thank you for your power that um, uh, enables us, that strengthens us. And we just commit all of us as students and faculty, Father, even as we go through the spring semester, it will be a wonderful time of learning, learning from your word, from fresh revelations that we receive that would um, uh, transform our lives that would um, um, that would give us a new perspective and how we look at uh, ministry our lives and um, how we look at things and we pray father that you would uh, that you would build us up and that all of us together as your people were called by your name God would do great things for you father that you have in store for us that we would take hold of what you have taken hold of us and that we would continue to run our race with perseverance and endurance fixing our eyes on you who is the author perfect and the finisher of our race father god we thank you we bless you we give you all the glory and honor and praise we thank you god that even as you have great plans and purposes for us even as you reveal it to us father we pray that um, uh, that uh, we would be able to receive it receive it by faith and god that we would be able to um, implement that in our lives that we would be able to take it forward and achieve god uh, uh, the calling that you have placed for us the plan and the purpose that you have for us we thank you that you are, are a great god and you have great things in store for us and that you will do great things in our lives this year we bless you we thank you in jesus name we pray amen amen, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Selena. Thank you, everyone, all faculty and students. Really good 
the start of this week and we look forward to the upcoming mentoring our sessions see you there thank you bye for now